of our three-part series on how to draw a wedged half dovetail joint using SketchUp. In this tutorial, I will show you how to draw the wedge, which is the simplest of the three steps. So our mission is still the same to connect an 8x12 tie beam to an 8x10 post with a wedged half dovetail tension joint. So the basic steps are we're going to draw a 14 inch by 2 inch rectangle because our wedge is going to have a total length of 14 inches and a total width of 2 inches. The 14 inch length is 4 inches longer than the 10 inch width of the post it's going through and that will allow it to stick out two inches on either side of that post, which will allow us plenty of room to be able to wedge it nice and snug. The next step we'll do is pull that rectangle up three inches. Then we will draw guidelines on that to represent key intersecting points, and this will be very simple. Then we'll connect those intersecting points with an angled line and then push the top part of that wedge out to reveal the final wedge profile. I do want to mention a couple of things that uh, we do when we are actually cutting the wedge out of a piece of hardwood. So although the diagram is going to call for a two inch thick piece of hardwood stock, first of all, it's best to, that that's dry rather than uh, freshly cut but we want to make it a little bit less than two inches thick in practice, because if the wedge, we don't want the wedge to bind on the, on the side faces or the cheeks of it, which would serve to spread the mortise apart and perhaps crack the timber. So we only want resistance along the slope and the bottom of the wedge, not the sides. So we plane it down at least a 16th inch undersize so that it's not binding on the sides as you're driving it. And the other thing that we do, this is number two under special considerations, is we take a little round over bit in a handheld router and we go along all the edges. So instead of having crisp edges, they're rounded over, which again, just helps with the process of driving the wedge in and eliminating you know, friction where you don't want it and focusing the friction on the planes that you do want it. So again, this is our full scale model. In this tutorial, we are simply drawing this red piece, which is the wedge. So this is what we want it to finally look like. And I've color coded it because the yellow area represents the area where it will actually be enclosed in the post. This section right here, this two inches in theory will extend inside the post. And then this uh, outer two inches would extend outside the post <clears throat> and you drive it from that end. Now, as you drive it, it actually ends up shifting it a little bit this way, but you still have two inches, so plenty of room to drive from the backside. But the other nice thing is it makes the front, the leading edge of this less than an inch and a half. So it starts through the slot easier. So again, the critical dimensions are the center 10 inches where two inches in, where the center 10 inches starts, we want it to be an inch and a half thick. And 10 inches out from that, or two inches in from the far end, we want it to be two and a half inches thick. So it's on the far end, it ends up being 2.7 inches thick. But we start off with our drawing by making it three inches tall, and we just clip off what we don't need. All right, hopefully that's fairly intuitive. So again, this is the show, the draw our in real life. So this wedge has actually been driven and you can see that it's still sticking out two inches beyond the outer face. Um, in this particular drawing, this is an internal post. So the so we're actually not going to cut that off. We're going to leave it in place and we can drive it in deeper as the whole timber dries. Although effectively with the with the pegs here, you know, you're kind of pushing up against each other, but it, it will allow us to, to tighten it. If this were an outside face that would be sheathed, we would cut this off flush. And then the siding actually keeps the, the wedge from backing out. And this is one of the reasons why we drive our pegs from the outside toward the inside of the building, whereas some framers drive them from the inside outward. The benefit of driving it from the inside outward is that over time you can continue to pound it tighter because you have access to it. But the problem is if there's siding on this side and you've cut it off flush, then later on when you try to drive it inwards, you're going to be pushing up against the siding. So 
We just choose to drive our wedges from the outer edge of the post inward. Again, this dash line represents the actual profile that the wedge is going to fit going through the timber. And so in this case, this was a white oak, a dry white oak wedge that we had put some heritage natural finish on. So let's get modeling. Again, here is our complete model. So if I were to take this wedge out, you would see that it comes out there. So these lines here, these two vertical lines are meant to represent the 10 inch center span. So it'd be two inches from here to here, two inches from here to here, and then 10 inches on the inside. I only put those lines there in this model to show you where they would be. I would not have them in the final model of the wedge. <clears throat> so let's get started drawing a wedge. Well, okay, let's go to this one. So this is the final version. And again, the center yellow section is the critical part. So this angle, we're not actually even going to determine that angle. We could, we could come in here with the, doo -doo -doo. well, we'd have to put a guide in there. Let me put a guide in. So we could come in here with our protractor tool and we could determine that that angle is 84.3 degrees. Or if we had put a horizontal guideline in and we could have figured out that that angle, we'd have to zoom right in, was to that. So you have, you know, 5.2. So the angle itself is not critical. What is critical is that your dimensions at one and a half inches or at two inches in are correct and at two inches in from this end are correct. So let's get modeling. Again, it's very simple. So our first step is we're going to draw a rectangle that's 14 inches by two inches. I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool, come down here at the origin, and I'm gonna go two inch comma 14 inch. Zoom in on that. And I'm going to pull that up three inches. And I'm now going to make that a component. Oops, so triple click, right click, make component. I'm gonna call it wedge. And so now I'm gonna rotate that around. So I need to draw some guidelines. Remember, it's my critical dimensions are two inches in this way. Notice that green line, that means you can see the green axis in the background down here, it means I'm in the right plane. Or I could simply hold onto that edge and drag it along and I know I'm good. So I wanna go two inches there. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, two inches there. So that is going to identify the central 10 inches that I want. And one, in, one end is gonna be up one and a half inches and the other end is gonna be up two and a half inches. So I'm just gonna pull a guideline up and I'm just gonna hover over that dashed line so that I know, and I don't know if you can see this very well, but that is a blue arrow going up. So that tells me I'm in the right, that, that I'm locked in correctly. So I'm gonna go 1.5 inches. Again, 1.5 inches. And I'm also going to go 2.5 inches. So here's the beauty of this. I don't have to worry about angles at all because now I know I know that I want it, I want an angle here and I want it to intersect this point and I want it to intersect this point. So if I just make a guideline, I find that X, click there, and then click there, it gives me a guideline. And now I can draw a line that represents that entire line. So I'm not gonna start here, I'm gonna start here because that's where it projects to come out. And then I'm gonna connect it up to here and then I'm gonna use my push-pull tool, rut row. So it must be that component wasn't open. Let me undo that, this will drive you crazy. So I've got that component open and again, so I'm gonna put my line here and then out to here and then push-pull that out. I'm gonna click outside of it. And now we can double check we can come here and see what our distance is. Yep, 1.5, and that is two inches in from the end. And here is 2.5, and that is two inches from that end. So let's delete our guides. 
and there is our profile. Now I could find what my total dimension is here. I could find what this 1.3, I believe. Yep. This slope here, the long side is 14.07. Um, and uh, so, but those numbers don't really matter. This is how I've drawn it. And, and if I lay out the, if I use the same process to lay it out on my stock, when I'm actually drawing it on the piece of wood and about to cut it, I follow the same procedure. I start off with something that's three inches tall. I come in two inches from either end, and then I measure it, make intersecting points, and then use a straight edge to do that. So this is very simple. It'll work every single time. I will point out that what, what is happening here is inside the area where it's in the timber, it is rising from one and a half inches to two and a half inches. So over 10 inches, it's only increasing one inch. Now, some framers like to make that wedge a little bit steeper, but it seems to me, it's been my experience that this is sort of the sweet spot because if you make this slope too steep, the wedge is much more likely to back out. If you keep it a fairly shallow angle, you're still going to get full bearing along the entire length of it, and it's far less likely to back out. So these are why, this is why we've chosen the dimensions we've chosen. And it's also why if you go back to the first video in this series where we were drawing the mortise, when we drew the bottom angle of the mortise, it was an inch and a half tall because the dovetail, the bottom dovetail on the tenon dropped an inch and a half. But when we drew the, the angled piece on the top of the mortise, we only went one inch up. And that's because there's only a change of one inch over that 10 inch span. So if you use these same dimensions or, or, or proportions of them, you should be good to go. So we hope you've enjoyed this series. Uh, drop us a note if you have any questions and we'll get back to you.